Hey guys, it's Seth. Welcome back to my channel. I am about to go hike the Oregon section of the Pacific Crest Trail, which is about 450 miles, a little bit more than that. And I did a video on the food that I'm bringing, but I wanted to run through some of the equipment that I will be taking with me. First of all, I just want to say I have never gone on a hike even close to this long. I've done a few like weekend and a little bit longer trips, but nothing even close to having to prepare for this much. This is just stuff I'm starting with. I'm sure there'll be things that I ditch along the way, and I am not trying to be an ultralight hiker. I think that a lot of my stuff is relatively light, but I also like my creature comforts. So here we go. I'm going to run through it. Okay, I'll just start over here. This is my water system. I have got uh, the Sawyer. This is the big one. It's not the, the, the mini or the micro. I had the mini for a while, but the flow was just too slow and I think it finally got bad on me. I have a new one liter platypus bladder, which is how I actually filter the water. I'll be carrying along two of these one and a half liter bottles with the sports cap. I will also, for a very short section, right around Crater Lake, be carrying a 3 liter bladder. Moving on, this is my navigation. I've just got uh, your compass and the Pacific Crest maps through Oregon. Over here to my cook system. This is the, I don't honestly know how you pronounce it, uh, Yuko. It's a knife, fork, spoon combo, and I actually really like this thing. This knife is good enough to cut through cooked chicken and steak if it's not basically leather and what I really like about this is you've got all of them but if you're eating out of the pre-made bags you can have a long extended handle I've got in here this is my pot I've got just a, um, I forget what size this is this is an 8 ounce canister here is my little stove this is a new Sea to Summit, this is a 1.9 liter or 64 ounce, half, it's a half gallon pot that I'm excited to try out. I wanted to do something a little bit bigger, first of all, so I could keep the canisters, and secondly, if I'm making bigger meals as far as like um, soups or if I'm doing dehydrated potatoes, it's nice to just have something you can actually stir it with. This is the koozie that I made for it because I'm bringing a bunch of vegetables that I can't simmer for 10 minutes or I'll run out of fuel immediately. So I've got this koozie that I made out of an old, the, the visor, the windshield cover for a car. So I've got that. This is a little scrubber that my grandmother makes for the whole family every year. It just uh, has been woven. It's a pretty abrasive, but not so abrasive. It'll take off the anodizing. So that's pretty much my cook system right there. Uh, moving on, this is kind of anything personal hygiene and or goes in or on the body. We'll start over here. I have A and D ointment, which most people probably won't bring, but that's because I just recently got a fairly large tattoo on my calf, which I'll put in a video of right here to show how much I love Oregon. Um, Moving on, I haven't tried this, it'll be interesting. This is just the Banana Boat Ultra Sport, basically deodorant style sunblock. I've got hand sanitizer and Dr. Bronner's, a little thing. I may ditch one of these just because it seems a little bit redundant. I just picked up ibuprofen because I don't really am not I'm not a big fan of taking pills, but I've also never done anything quite like this and I don't want to be so miserable I can't move. So I got some of these to throw in my pack in case things get really uncomfortable. I've got my inhaler because I have asthma. I have an EpiPen because I have some strange allergies and I don't want to be a hundred miles from anywhere and have an allergic reaction. And also if there's other people on the trail that might be allergic to bees or something like that. I just think this is a really amazing thing that can come in handy. A little big and bulky, but seems like a cheap insurance policy for me. This is Body Glide because that's a long way to go. And if any of you, I mean, if you don't know what Body Glide is, it's basically, it's body lubricant so that you don't chafe while you're walking hundreds and hundreds of miles. This is going to be a big one. This is deep free bug spray. I tried this stuff out in Hawaii and it did surprisingly well. 
I think DEET is a pretty amazing product, although it scares me a little bit. I know that it works well against mosquitoes, but I also have seen it melt furniture. So I'm a little bit hesitant to throw that on my body while I'm doing that. Toothbrush, toothpaste, um, body wipes. This is also, I mean, one, it's just nice to be able to do a hobo shower, and two, with my new tattoo, it's pretty well healed, but I wanted to be able to have something that I could clean that with. Thing of chapstick. Uh, moving down here, I have a notepad because I want to be documenting a lot of this stuff. I will be doing videos like this, but I also, because this is such a kind of a new experience for me, I want to be documenting what food I'm eating, how far I'm going each day, how many calories-ish I'm burning. So, yeah, we got the right in the rain, medium-sized pad. This is a new thing for me. This was gifted to me by my incredibly gracious cousin, Jeremy. This is a personal locator beacon by ACR. This is the Rescue Link 400. It's just a one-time use emergency if shit hits the fan deal here. And it's interesting. This is your antenna. Make sure you got a clear line of the sky and you hit that power button and it should, it notifies your emergency contacts and it also sends out search and rescue. Here's my headlamp. This was a new purchase. It's the Black Diamond and this is by far not the most powerful one that you can get. It's pretty small if you can't tell. I think it's 160 lumens which is absolutely plenty for me. I've had some other really bright headlights that are great if you want to illuminate your entire camp in a hundred meters past it. But what I really liked about this, it's plenty bright enough. It's very light and it only has, it. you only need two AAA batteries to power it, which I think is fantastic. So I also have just an extra set of batteries for that. Let's move over here. Um, this is a head net for mosquitoes, which Right now in the Cascades and all through Oregon, I know the mosquitoes are absolutely terrible. We'll go over here a little bit. This is my kind of emergency kit, but I'll get, I'll get to that in a sec. This is also a brand new item. This is REI's super light chair. I probably will get some flack for having a chair, but I've had a bad back since high school doing year-round sports, and I cannot sit without a backrest. It causes breathing issues. And I'll try to see if maybe I can strengthen that up a little bit while I'm on the trail and not use it quite as much. But like I said, not an ultralight hiker and I want to be comfortable. Here I've just got headphones and a charger for my phone. This you can't see because I'm using it right now, but this is for my camera, which is the Sony RX105, which is coming along with me on the journey. It also has a, I have the tripod on it, which is just a cheapo Walmart. Bendy Pod, it was $17. It seems to be doing fine for me. Here is the Goal Zero uh, Venture 70. This is the external battery. This is definitely bigger and bulkier than what most people will need. I actually had this when I was in Hawaii and I was living off grid. But this is will be able to charge my iPhone fully six times, which should be plenty because I'm not going to use it that much. Plus, if I happen to be doing a lot of videos, or if I run out of batteries for my camera, I can recharge that. This is kind of a food item, but I always like to have them in my bag. These are Jolly Ranchers, which are great for having on the trail. If you're, you know, a little low energy, you can use a sugar boost and, you know, just kind of wets your whistle a bit. Toilet paper. This is a new trowel because I'm tired of digging holes with trekking poles. This is the... The deuce, the deuce of spades, or whatever whatever they call it, this thing weighs basically nothing. Over here, I've got two large Ziploc bags because I want to try, I've heard that you can wash your clothes in a bag like this, so throw some dirty drawers and your socks that you've been using in there, throw a little bit of soap, throw them in your bag, and hit the trail. I'm excited to try that out. I also have a relatively thin garbage bag because my backpack is not waterproof. I gotta th I'll throw that in there, throw my sleeping bag and some other warm clothes in case it starts raining and then I don't have to worry about getting soaked. Coming back over here, here's a few things. This is a new knife I got. Uh, you guys probably don't know this, but I absolutely love knives. I've loved knives since I was a kid. But I didn't want to carry a big bulky um, 
hunting knife or anything like that. I'm a big, big fan if you're going to go out there having a fixed blade. I think other pocket knives are fine. This is pretty much only going to be for cutting food and or pretty menial tasks. But this is the K-Bar Skeleton. You can't really see it, but the whole handle, there is no handle here. It's just cut out. This thing is super light. It works great as a neck knife and whatnot. And then I threw this really bright duct tape on there because I've already lost it a few times just sitting around in the house because it is so small. So that's my knife. This is something that I haven't tried on the trail. I've used quite a bit in other athletics and stuff like that. This is basically just a massage ball. I've been having a some issues with my arches. I had issues with that in college when I was doing track. So I'm gonna see if this can be a little bit of preventative maintenance out on the trail. There's a lighter, that will just be in my bag. So all of this stuff here, this is kind of my emergency kit. This is definitely what I've pared down the most, although I just threw in a few extra things right before I did this video. But working from the bottom up, this is kind of medical stuff. I've got antiseptic towelettes. This is an after bite, after sting alcohol wipe. I've got two whole band-aids here and one butterfly strip in case something goes wrong. I've got triple antiseptic ointment. These are iodine uh, pills or whatever for water purification if something happens. I have an extra lighter, a baby clip, this is a roll of, you can also use it as a sewing string if, well, God forbid you need to do stitches, but more likely if something on your bag or if you're on your tent breaks, you can sew it up, which I guess brings me to this. This is just a little roll of duct tape and I have a few needles taped to the outside of it. Um, I have one single use super glue, which I have super glued many cuts back together. This is a new addition. This is Wound Seal. If you're not familiar with what that is, is an instant scab. This is like nylon. I think this is some sort of nylon duct tape. The guy at the store convinced me that you'd be foolish not to go out on the trail with it. Here's a patch kit for my air mattress, moleskin, and then the last two things that I just throw in there is probably over redundant but I had a bunch of these laying around. This is a magnesium and flint combination. This is in case you know things really go wrong you can't start a fire because little lighters I mean you can lose them you can break them but also they don't work when it's really cold which is when you need a fire. Also this this is probably something not most people will carry. I might end up ditching it at some point but these are little fire starters like I said, on my last trip, I got stuck out in the rain. Everything was completely soaked. I was able to get a fire going, but it took me probably an hour and a half where if I would have just had these, could have lit those, built the fire around it, and been much comfortable much quicker. So that is basically what I'm going to be carrying in my bag. I'm going to clear this table off, and then I will show you my sleep system, my backpack, and then all of the clothes that I'm going to be bringing. This is the stuff that I will be wearing out on the trail. Uh, to start off with, I don't have them on right now. They're actually in a buddy's car, but I will be wearing the Ultra Timps shoes 1.5. I wore through the first pair I had. They're some of the most comfortable shoes I've ever had. I have a very wide foot and I like to have lots of room. So the big toe box is super, super ideal for me. I've got these. These are just some camp shoe. Then over here, this is a buff. Nothing special about it. It's basically a tube sock that goes over your head or your neck. You guys, I'm sure, are familiar with what buffs are. This is a recycled Patagonia beanie. It, I don't rock a lot of Patagonia because I can't afford it, but this was on sale. And it's a bunch of recycled polyester. This is a bucket hat that I got in Mexico because I was going on a boat tour and I needed something quick and it was crushable. Moving on to this stuff. I guess we'll just kind of start at the very base. I've got bringing two pairs of boxer briefs from, these are sacks. Next are the socks that I'm going to be wearing. These are just really thin. I'm not really sure what the brand is, but they're thin socks that are not cotton. <laughs> That's all I really know. 
Got two pairs of sock liners. This is a long sleeve icebreaker merino wool shirt for cold nights, cold mornings. These are Columbia titanium leggings. Next would be my, this thin shirt. This is a new brand. I haven't tried it, uh, but it was recommended to me. It's Viori, I believe, V-U-O-R-I. My old trusty REI button up collared shirt, super thin, light, breathable. Moving on, uh, these shorts that I'm wearing now, you can't hardly, I mean, they're nothing special. These are Under Armour, really thin, light, stretchable, with a couple pockets. That's what I had, that's what I'm gonna wear. Next is these really inexpensive, these are actually Wranglers. They're just stretchy, stretchy fabric. Probably not the best thing that you could wear, but it's, Honestly, this is the only pair of pants I own, and I didn't want to spend another $200 on a nice pair of hiking shoes, or pants. Also, just kind of on a side note, these and this puffy jacket, this is an Eddie Bauer puffy, I got those last year at Costco. These were $15, bucks. this was $35. You cannot find anything that price, I don't, I haven't seen, for $35. Moving on. This, so covered all this. This I just recently purchased at Goodwill. I'm excited about this. This is the Columbia Titanium Fleece. And last but not least, well, actually, yeah, kind of least. This is a super cheap, just tank top that I'll be rocking. This is almost exclusively for laundry days if I'm in town. And then also, uh, gauze. If something bad goes wrong and I need to cut something up to... Seal up a wound. That's what I'm using. I will also, I've got sunglasses that I will be bringing. But other than that, that's everything that's going to be with me on the trail. Next is my sleep system and my tent. So I guess we'll start off over here. This is an Outdoor Vitals 20 degree bag. Next is this pad. Cannot remember the name of this pad, but it's an REI. It's a lightweight, uh, it's more of a spring pad. Here's my cocoon pillow. I'm that guy. I definitely bring a camp pillow because it affects my sleep big time. I've got my footprint, which I've just cut out of Tyvek that I got from the local lumber yard. I've got my tent stakes and this. This is my newest addition. This is a Six Moons Lunar Solo tent. I absolutely love this thing. This was a game changer. You can, uh, I mean, you can see that it basically gets down to nothing. It sets up with one trucking pole and six stakes. This is a 45 liter, which I've found. I've already had this bag pretty well packed. I think it's the perfect size. It's got a detachable brain. It's relatively simple. There's one main pocket. You've got this mesh pocket in the back. Two kind of small side pockets and two hip pockets, and I love it. It's been working for me. The last one I had, had way too many bells and whistles. And then this is the bag that I will be carrying my food in. It's not a bear bag. It's just a waterproof Sea to Summit. I also have trekking poles that aren't here right now. They are in my buddy's car as well. But other than that, I think I have covered everything. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If so, please hit the thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow me on my journey. See you in the next video.